This has been the hottest ticket in the Puget Sound for weeks as the Washington Huskies kick off the 2001 football season with a great intersectional matchup taking on one of the finest in the Big Ten Conference. The Michigan Wolverines come to Husky Stadium to open the 2001 campaign. Hi everybody, I'm Todd Pickett. We welcome you to Seattle. The first time the Wolverines have been here since 1983. Another exciting year looming ahead for Rick Neuheisel and the Huskies after a wild 2000 campaign. What more can you say about a team that had an exciting year with comeback victories in nine of its 12 games? We'll never forget the last second heroics against Stanford. The touchdown pass from the now departed Marcus Tuiasa Sopo. Another comeback win here against Cal as the Huskies, in Rick Neuheisel's words, just found a way to win in the fourth quarter so many times a season ago en route to a conference co-championship and a berth in the Rose Bowl. Trailing at Colorado against Oregon State, Cal, Stanford, Arizona, and UCLA. Eight fourth quarter comebacks in all for the Huskies as part of an exciting 2000 season. That's all in the books, though. Sunny Six Killer, now we turn to 2001. Well, I'll tell you what, it's an exciting start. Michigan on the dock at first with a game last week, but the Huskies have been looking forward to this game, Todd, because it is new players, a whole new deal, a couple of new coaches thrown in there, and the Huskies are ready to go today. New players at quarterback as well. Both these teams coming in with relatively inexperienced quarterbacks, although John Navarre has some starts under his belt. John Navarre had very great success last year filling in for the departed Drew Henson. But Cody Pickett, everybody's looking for him to look like Marcus Tuiasa Sopo. He says it's a new time and it's a new deal and it's Cody Pickett's time. And everybody's hoping that if we're related in any way that he got the recessive genes when it comes to athletic <laughs> ability. He's a great youngster. We're looking forward to seeing him guide this Husky offense. But a lot of the pressure on the offense will come up front. Talk about Green. This offensive line has a lot of guys who are getting some playing time in mass for the first time. Well, there's no question. Some of these guys have starters the first time, but a lot of them got some playing time last year, Todd. And Kyle Ben right there is going to be the leader of that group, getting that offensive line on, uh, on the right page. As you see, Ben, the only returning starter up front, but all these guys got a little bit of playing time a year ago. They've been used to knocking heads a bit. Oh, there's no question, but Kyle Ben, being the captain-elect as he was this last year, has these guys working hard all year. They're ready to play today, and he'll be a great leader out there this afternoon. So this offensive line going to be a big key to the success as the Huskies try to get things going with their high-powered offense once again. A great showdown. These two teams usually meet in the Rose Bowl. This time, they're going to kick off the season in their area to watch. What will Washington's defense do today against Michigan to Tech? You've got the All-American preseason guy in Larry Triplett. Marcus Roberson is also up front. The Huskies are hungry on defense and ready to go. We'll kick things off. The Huskies and the Wolverines coming up next. We're ready to get things started at Husky Stadium. Washington winning the coin toss. They elect to defer to the second half. So the Huskies will kick things off. John Anderson set to kick. Todd Howard and Charles Drake will be deep for Michigan. Watch for Anderson to drive this one. Exactly what he does through the end zone for the touchback. John Navarre was thrust into the role of starter a year ago when Drew Henson went out with an injury just prior to the start of the season, but he is known that he would be the starter ever since Henson elected in the spring to leave school and become a professional baseball player. So he's been getting a lot more work in. Last week, Navarre 19 of 32 in Michigan's victory over Miami of Ohio. Pape Goodwin, Anderson, Petrozello, and Solomon across the front. There are questions about the Wolverines line as well. They run it on first down for a short game. B.J. Askew, the ball carrier, their most talented running back. They will try to get it in his hands as often as possible. He stopped for a gain of about three. Check that. It was Chris Perry carrying. As we take a look at the defensive lineup for the Washington Huskies. A lot of experience there for Washington. Call it a gain of three on the play. Perry carrying once again gets close to first down range before he gets wrapped up. Javon Willis the first to get to him along with Owen Biddle. He 
defensive alignment now for Washington. Across the front, Roberson, Triplett, and Jerome Stevens getting the start, the sophomore. Ellis, Kelly, Madabi, and Willis at the backers. Lowe, Davis, Carruthers, and Rock Alexander in the secondary. Third and inches, a little dive, and it should be enough for the first down as Navarre keeps. Sonny, three straight plays behind the horses. Well, Michigan, you knew coming in, was going to run the football. That's what they did last week, really. Not a lot of great success throwing it from Navarre. Tim Hunley, defensive coordinator, feels that the Huskies need to stop that rush from the Wolverines this afternoon. And now they go to a spread with an empty backfield. Is that a first in Michigan history? Navarre with a man open, throws it behind him in the slot. Really did not get it to either receiver in the pattern. Not a very good throw that time, Todd. Uh, you saw Omari Lowe and Owen Biddle out there in coverage, but slipping down out there, number 23, excuse me, 83, Chris uh, Perry, the running yeah, back. Perry out of the backfield, and Marquise Walker was right. the other receiver, and Navarre put it between them for a minute. I thought they might get a pick out of it. Second and deep, and they open it up again. A little underneath now to Perry, next solidly by Ben Madavi. Great close that time. They're actually going to mark it for a bit of a loss and bring up a third and long. Here's the play by Madavi. They got four wideouts and the tight end split out. They come to the near side, but watch Ben Madavi. He read this one right all the way from the get go. Todd, that was a great job by Ben to step up there. Got inside the pick that time. They put Perry back in the backfield this time on third and long. Check offs at the line. Navarre with a lot of time. Looks over the middle, caught short of the first down. Goes to his tight end that time. Bill Seymour, Todd, coming across on the near side. Redshirt senior, a big target, but he falls down short by about a yard and a half. And Hayden Epstein will come on to punt as Navarre comes over to the sidelines to talk with Lloyd Carr. They did bring some people on that play, Todd, and got a little pressure, but it really looked like John Navarre had a lot of time to throw the football. Jerry, Jeremy Miller, the snapper, Willie Hurst, back deep to return for the Huskies. A lot of hang time on this one for Epstein and a late fair catch and a wise decision there by Hurst. He will take it right at the 20-yard line. It's about a 31-yard punt that time and no return. Huskies will set it up right at the 20. And now, hope. <laughs> That's a little swallow may be the best advised thing for Cody Pickett right now as he heads out for his first starting snap as the quarterback for Washington. Well, there's a, there's a few young people out there starting. You there's see the, it there, Caleb Barnes there, Todd. The line again, then Hurst, Wilson, Robbins, Elstrom, and Kevin Ware gets the start at tight end. Jeremy Stevens will sit the first half for disciplinary measures for the Huskies. And they're gonna throw on first, so much for the young quarterback. Juggled and incomplete, looking along the sidelines for another freshman, Reggie Williams. Cato June on the coverage for Michigan. There's one way to get your butterflies out, Six. Well, I'll tell you, <laughs> that was a great job. To, Cody Pickett, actually not a bad throw out there to a tall target in 6'4". Reggie Williams, one-on-one, -on -one, locked onto the cornerback out there, but just couldn't quite hang on to it. Had to slow down a little bit, slightly underthrown ball. Todd Howard out on the coverage for Michigan, their senior corner. Little butterflies by the true freshman as well. Option on second down, Pickett turning the corner, has room out near the first down marker. Tui who? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, Todd Pickett, everybody knows it now if you're in Seattle, Husky land. Little bit quicker than Marcus Tuiasasopo. Not as intuitive as Marcus was last year, but right here, reads it properly, cuts up right behind the big guy, Backert, just like you draw it up, and right there picks up the first down. Shoestring tackle on him by Cato June. Cody getting enough for the first down, and will throw again through the hands of Williams, who is open in the flat. Victor Hobson, the outside linebacker, covering for Michigan. Here's a look at the uh, Wolverines' defensive alignment now. Across the front, Rumashek, Hoyer, Lazarus, and Orr. The three backers, Hobson, 
Both Foot and Brackens have had some problems. They may be in and out today. Lesur, June, Curry, and Howard across the front. Charles Drake will see some time, and Marlon Jackson will also play in the Michigan secondary. Motion on the play. The handoff stacked up for little or no gain. Looked as though Michigan had jumped. I want to go back to that last throw from Cody Pick a little bit, Toddy. One thing, a young guy, there's Rick Neuheisel trying to stay. Uh, I hope he's got a sunblock on that sideline this afternoon. <laughs> but as a young quarterback throwing to a young receiver, sometimes you you want to get it right to the numbers, even if you're running it out. And when you do that, you're going to throw a little behind the, the receiver. He's got to lead down. him to where he wants him to go. Great point, Sonny. You're just trying to get that early completion get it there. and get the <laughs> nervousness out a little bit. They got the encroachment, so a five-yard penalty against the Wolverines. We'll move it out to the 35-yard line. Wilson and Hurst in the backfield this time. Make a walker up front. Hurst only gets a couple. Close down quickly that time. Shante Orr. And a look at Willie Hurst with all the guys that rotated through the backfield a season ago. They got it done by committee. And Willie, the starter this season, had several spectacular runs a year ago. <laughs> I don't think Husky fans will ever forget the run against Arizona. Checking off again at the line of scrimmage. A quick slant, throw it behind his intended receiver again. Cody reading some pressure, put it behind Paul Arnold, and the Huskies will be forced to punt. Victor Hobson, number six, getting right into Cody Pickett's uh, view right there. Had to delay getting rid of the football, and then he just basically threw the ball away. Taylor Barton, the backup quarterback there on the sidelines as well. well now, we'll, Go ahead, Six. I was just saying, here's another young man in the first action of the year. Yes, our first look at another talented freshman, Derek McLaughlin from Mountain View High in Mesa, Arizona. Julius Curry is back deep for Michigan. Low line drive kicks some room for Curry for a return. Has a good wall set up along the sideline. Now finds open room in the middle of the field, and they'll take it onto the Washington side of midfield before the tackle is made. Good run back by Curry, who only averaged about six yards a return last week. He gives Michigan excellent field position. They'll have the ball over midfield to start this series early in the first quarter. About five minutes gone in the first quarter. Capacity crowd at Husky Stadium for the first meeting between these two teams in Seattle since 1983. The Wolverines have it at the 45 yard line after the great punt run back. Jopro the tight end in motion and it's Perry carrying once again. Ball popped loose. They'll rule him down though. All the talk going into the game was about B.J. Askew. Chris Perry, a talented running back, went to Fort Union Military, the same high school as Eddie George. The coaches at that school claim he was a better running back than Eddie George. That's saying a lot. <laughs> I tell you, I remember a few years ago, the Huskies went back in his senior year to Ohio State, and I've never seen a back run quite that well against the Huskies. It's been Perry the sophomore all the way so far. Play action this time. They pick up the Husky defenders. Navarro all day long, throws Alexander, intercepts it at the nine yard line. He had a man open and under threw it. Rock Alexander with the pick. And the Husky defense comes up with an early break. I tell you, Rock Alexander is a special player State running champion in the state of Colorado in 100 meters. You see that great block in there by the Wolverines on great Carruthers. But talk about going to the top of your leap, the way you're coached. It. When you go for a pick, you get as high as you possibly can. Come down with it. What great hands on that, Todd. Pass that was intended for Ronald Bellamy, and he had some space, and the ball got underthrown by Navarre. Washington gets a turnover, but the Huskies backed up against their own goal line here. First on the delay, bounces off one of his linemen and gets dropped. Cato June teaming up with Shanti Orr on the stop that time for Michigan. 
there was daylight, but when you're running into your own horses, it gets closed a little quicker. Well, Nick Newton's down there going against a pretty good sized horse himself on that offensive line. And Hoyer, you know, is a 300 pounder, but uh, you know, really, he doesn't uh, run into his backs too, I mean, his linemen very often. Yeah, usually he's past him with a little thank you and on the way. First single back this time for the team. Off to the deep side, there is the ability of Reggie Williams. And a flag thrown on the play as well, should be interference. All right, so you just have to put it out there where he can dive for it instead of putting it near his hands. Well, I tell you, that's uh, stretching that six foot four inch body out there for the grab, going over the top of Todd Howard. Pretty good throw, I tell you, it's right there and it's just going over the top, Todd. And that's a, uh, I wish you could coach this, but you can't. <laughs> true, Reggie Williams. True freshman going against a senior and the anchor of that Michigan secondary. The holding call against the Wolverines, of course, declined. Nice way to make your first career catch. I agree with, with you. style. Well, you're going against a 5'10 cornerback in Howard, and uh, you should be able to go up and get the football. One of the most highly sought-after receivers in the country, and Reggie Williams showing you why right there. Picks up 20 in a first down. Option again, and Michigan reading it. Cody Pickett wrapped up solidly that time. Larry Foote, the inside linebacker, the senior, making that read, and uh, I think there might have been a missed assignment or two here, Six. Well, once in a while, the defense is going to call the right call, and this one, they just had it snuffed out, and right there, you saw it. Larry Foote just beat the block, came around, and disrupted the play. Yeah. Anytime you see a lineman spun back facing the quarterback with both his hands out, might be a, might be a sure <laughs> signal there. Well, that Larry, an apology is due. Well, Larry <laughs> Foote, that senior, you know, he's been doing it for a few years there at Michigan, and last year, number two in total tackles for the Wolverines. Yeah, not as though the Wolverines have seen uh, option offense before there in the Midwest. Loss of a couple for Pickett. On the delay, Hurst, nice cut back to get some running room, and he'll get out over the 35 before he's wrapped up. Ball squirted free, they say he was down from the contact. Victor Hobson leading the tacklers for Michigan. I have a feeling you're gonna be mentioning those three linebackers for Michigan quite a bit today, Todd. <laughs> they are everywhere. Nice delay, look at Kyle Ben, 64, leading the way on this one. Looking for somebody to hit, finally find someone, but Willie Hurst, what an exciting player. What a great leader he has been since uh, his junior year. Six, some smart poise right there by Ben. He's able to wall it off and really take two guys out of the play and give Willie Hurst an avenue in which to cut. Let him make the call. Need to get it to just about the 40. Down the line. A late turn in the corner that time and no room for Hurst. He gets chased out close to it. They're going to spot him about a half yard short as the Wolverines made pretty good pursuit. They strung that out extremely well. And Cody, really not anyone to option on the corner that time, just strung it out a little bit too far. By the time he gets the ball out to Willie Hurst, there's no room to run. Yeah, the synchronization just didn't look that solid that time on the pitch. And no. McLaughlin will come on. As you mentioned, too, six all good grab on the snap. There he gets much better height this time. I'm sure the coaches talked to him about it after that first punt. And there's the result. You may not get as much distance, but your net gain is so much better. He gave the coverage team a chance. Yeah, and you've got that great tackler, Todd Elstrom, down making it. Michigan inside the 35. Both teams exchanging punts so far here in the first quarter. Michigan with the ball at the 33-yard line to start this series. They'll run their own delay as well. Askew breaking through a tackle into the secondary and tumbles out over the 40-yard line. Ben Madavi, Rock Alexander there on the stop along with Terry Johnson from the defensive line and Chris Perry has been doing uh, the bulk of the work here. As we said, it was Askew, the guy talked about coming into the game. Perry has carried the load. Well, Chris Perry, as a freshman last year, had a great year rushing for over 400 yards. But the Husky defense, not only linebackers, but those safeties are going to have to react a little quicker on those delays, Todd, to get up there and get some hits on. Power formation this time. Phil Bracken's into the game as well. Perry running it right out to first down yard. It should be enough for the first. Madavi and Willis there once again. Anthony Kelly also in on the stop and a first down for Michigan. 
Both teams kind of working through things a little bit. Sonny, so far, you'd have to say the offensive lines have passed the scrutiny. Well, so far, you know, but, uh, you know, it's early in the ball game, and one thing about the weather is it's been over, just over 70 degrees in Michigan, 70, 75 here today. See how long that energy lasts. Lloyd Carr, his first meeting against Washington, and now Askew is in the backfield on first down. Navarro, a little toss again to the tight end. First down and more inside the 40-yard line. Bill Seymour, the senior tight end with the catch. Well, Anthony Kelly was there in coverage. It's just a great throw by Navarro that time, and Seymour with a nice show of his hands. See Navarro just nice, not a lot of pressure on him, but a beautiful throw. Excuse me, it was uh, Jimmy Newell in coverage, Anthony Kelly trailing to help out, but that's the guy he likes to go to as far as the tight end. Wolverine spreading it out a little bit inside the Husky 40, ask you the setback. Plenty of time again for Navarro, tries to throw the underneath screen, incomplete for Askew, and I think that was more a throwaway than anything else. Wise decision by Navarre. Well, there was four Huskies down there reading that play, Kai Ellis and uh, Larry Triplett, of course, out there, but good pressure up the middle that time by the Huskies. Seventh year as the head coach at Michigan for Lloyd Carr, following 15 years as an assistant coach for the Mays and Blue. His team, Sonny, really played it tight to the book last week against Miami of Ohio. Didn't show a thing. No, they don't. In fact, the coaches from the Husky side will tell you they don't change a lot of things at Michigan. Askew tripped up at the line of scrimmage. Kai Ellis, the transfer, the guy they talked a lot about in the spring and the offseason, showing why. Well, you see at that time, Kai Ellis, the big guy from San Francisco City College, Jonathan Goodwin from Michigan trying to get out there to kick him out. No way, that shows the speed. That's one thing the Huskies recruited him for, Todd, and you'll see it right there, just coming down the line of scrimmage. They'll love having that outside pressure from him. Askew remains in on third and long. Navarre under pressure and drop. Greg Carruthers from the strong safety flew in to drop him. Big hitters from a year ago gets his first level of this season. Well, one of the Michigan linemen got him the last time he came on a blitz and knocked him flat on his back. That time, Greg Carruthers was not going to get blocked. See him coming from the left side. Pressure two man. Anthony Kelly takes on the blocker. That allows Greg Carruthers the freedom to go for the quarterback. And that's a big quarterback to take down. Winds up giving Epstein a little bit more room for punting, actually, from the 43. <laughs> Hurst is back deep. And he's trying to pin this one into the corner. Fair catch signal taken just outside the 10 yard line. Those are the rules. If you're over the 10, wave it and make the grab and they'll be set up at the 12. Really that long run back has kept the Huskies bottled up in their own end a little bit. They'll start inside the defensive red zone once again. A little more than four minutes left in the first quarter. Back at a sun-drenched Husky Stadium. Still no score late in the first quarter of play as Washington starts again, deep in its own territory. Wilson in the backfield, and Rich Alexis getting his first carry of the year. Breaks one tackle, but he's going to get snowed under inside the five-yard line. The initial pressure from Victor Hobson, and then the rest of that left side of the Michigan defense just rolled over him. Try to get a, try to get uh, Rich Alexis involved in the game. You got Matthias Wilson trying to lead him around the corner, but you see the flow right there, and you see the guy right there, 43. Carl Diggs had his eyeballs from the moment they came on the field. His eyeballs were on 24. Rich Alexis, Hobson teaming up with Larry Foot to make the stop, and a big loss there. Third tackle for loss already in the game for Foot. Not where you want to have your young quarterback second and long just outside the five. They'll run the delay. Alexis head down takes it up to just short of the 10 yard line and again foot there along with Victor Hobson. Well I tell you Larry foot is very well disciplined stayed right in the hole that time waiting for Rich Alexis to get to him and made a very big hit. Well, Sonny, if you're Rick Neuheisel at this end of the field, you have to say, well, our defense has done a pretty decent job so far. We're not going to get too fancy right here. Well, you need to do something to gain a few yards here. Uh, you hate to lose a lot of field position to Michigan this early in the ballgame. 
Williams and Todd Elstrom at the bottom of the screen. Arnold will go out to the top of the screen. They need to take it just short of the 23. Michigan showing some pressure. Quick slant to Elstrom. Didn't get enough blocking help. He'll be well short of the first down as he's wrapped up by Cato June for the Wolverines. Good read, just not enough yardage. No, they were sliding over that direction. They were going to the side that Reggie Williams was split out to, and they were in position to make the big play on Todd Elstrom. It's good to see Todd back catching footballs with that hamstring injury. He's been nursing for about a week and a half. Huskies, of course, were hoping to have Chris Jurgens back this year as well. He was unable to come back from injury, but it's still a very talented receiver core. McLaughlin on for his third punt. It'll roll through the end zone. Michigan is on the board. Brandon Williams and Calvin Bell both there. And Marquise Walker getting the block for the Wolverines. Boy, they were coming through on that one. They knew they've got a young freshman punter, never punted in college before. Maybe have taken just a little bit longer than he should have, but there was a pretty good rush coming through there, Todd. Yeah, Walker coming right through. They didn't get a good hat on him in Michigan. You see some of their fans at that end zone celebrating. They take the 2-0 lead, and, of course, they'll get the ball back now as well. Well, that's why you put your wide receivers on those special teams. You utilize that speed, and Marquise Walker obviously being a wide receiver for Michigan, showing it on that play. Well, I think you could have gotten pretty long odds in the guess the first score of the season contest this year. <laughs> Bobby Hawk, special teams coach down there, along with Rick Neuheisel. Huskies deciding now, I think, whether they'll have McLaughlin kick it or have John Anderson kick it away from the 20. Well, Bobby Hawk's going to be agonizing over that play for uh, not only the rest of this afternoon, but through till tomorrow. And the freshman punter will be able to kick this one without any pressure on the free from the 20. On the field, they're invincible, but off the field, they're all too human. Fox Sportsnet takes a look at the athletes you thought you knew. He was an unknown seeking a dream in the NFL, but his hope became a reality. Find out about the Kurt Warner you never knew as Beyond the Glory takes you inside the world of sports' biggest stars. That's Beyond the Glory with the Kurt Warner with a K. Coming up next on Fox Sportsnet. Laughlin hanging one nicely on the free kick. Julius Curry taking it back inside his own 20 and trying to get across the field. Gets through the first wave and gets stopped over the 35-yard line. Zach Tuiasasopo amongst the special teamers on that stop. The Tui name living on. Well, I'll tell you, Zach's going to create his own name saw a little glimpse right there. And he's in the lineup as well now. Yeah, he's uh, definitely going to be uh, one to reckon with. He's a very aggressive young player. Get a lot of playing time. The bar at 50% thus far. Perry in the sec in the uh, backfield once again. And the new motion man as they give it to Perry. And he'll get two or three yards that time. It spins out for a little extra. Bottom of the pile, you got Kai Ellis helping out, turning him to the inside. Saw Zach Tuyasasopo in on that play. Wanami Davis also coming up to help wrap him up. <laughs> Members of the offensive unit waiting to get back out onto the field. Looking for their first score of the season still. Bracken's a big blocking back in the backfield as well. Perry once again, and Ellis wraps him up for a short game. Sonny, you talked a little earlier about Kai Ellis' speed, and he's able to get around blockers well. Well, he's got athleticism, you know, and being that size that he is with long arms and strong arms, as you can see right there, but 245 pounds with a little bit of speed is kind of scary. What's helping him also is up front, you've got Jerome Stevens and Larry Triplett doing some occupying of the offensive linemen. Letting Big Kai Ellis do his thing. Michigan one of three on third downs thus far. Inside give. 
Askew rounding the corner. He'll be stopped at about the 44-yard line. Rock Alexander with the open field tackle, and the Wolverines will be short. Well, you know, with the passing game not being, we saw it, John Navarre was three of six, but haven't really had great success with the pass. Michigan trying to get some ground control in here now with the two points on the board. About two and a half yards to go. And we reach the end of the first quarter of play. So that will give Lloyd Carr and his offensive unit a little bit longer time with which to discuss whether or not they're going to go for it out near midfield. The block punt, our only score of the game thus far. The Wolverine safety make it 2 nothing at the end of one. Back in Seattle for the start of the second quarter of play. Michigan has decided to punt, or at least they have Epstein out there. I'll tell you, with those fives and sixes, it's hard to tell whether that was Navarre standing back there faking or Epstein ready to punt. A look at Willie Hurst, who's back to return again for Washington. Grab of the snap by Epstein. He handles the kicking duties for the Wolverines as well. Favorable bounce for the Huskies. And they'll spot it out of bounds at the 28-yard line. About a 27-yard punt is all that time for Epstein. And some of the better field position that Washington has had in a while. Last time the Huskies had the ball, they started deep in their own end. And after some losses, gave up the safety on the blocked punt. Time of possession's always been a big one for the Huskies. When they control it, they usually win. Michigan enjoying the advantage so far. Alexis in the backfield. Washington looking to throw on first down. Pick and hit as he throws. Gets it to Walker for a short gain over to about the 33-yard line. The redshirt senior Ken Walker at the fullback position. And the second completion of the game now for Cody Pickett. It's not a bad play to throw the ball short, dump it off to your fullback. That's one thing that the Huskies have used the last few years. They had the luxury of Pat Conniff, Todd, that could come out of the backfield, make a grab. You see the good blocking up front there. It'll give them a lot of time to find Ken Walker. Yeah, unfortunately, the Wolverines really weren't coming hard that time on a rush, or that might have been even more successful. Option, good read by Pickett. Couldn't make the late pitch, but he gets enough for the first down out to about the 40-yard line before Foote is there, along with June for Michigan. He had to turn that one up in a hurry, Sonny. Well, that's a good read by Cody Pickett. You know, he's been around here for a couple years and running the ball in the second team, and that time he saw the opening, took it. Good job of kicking out foot. You're right, Todd. And, of course, Howard there is a little bit smaller than Cody Pickett and couldn't wrap him up. Then he had, to, you know, the... Uh, the luxury almost if he tried one of the late two he pitched specials he still had the man, <laughs> man along the sideline good read to hang on to that one and pick up the first down Alexis again the man in the backfield and a little rollout for some time now back under to Alexis oh yeah, good job that time they had the wall established but, oh. but the uh, underneath pursuit saves at that time by war well Shanty or being the rush man on the end of the line of scrimmage from the left side sees right away recognizes that it's not going to be a sweep to his side and just flows right on out there with Rich Alexis and able to make the play. If Rich Alexis had gotten the ball a little sooner, he would have a little bit more time to run, Todd. Good call there, Six. They still pick up seven on the play. And again, some time for Cody looking over the middle flag thrown. Looked like a lot of holding on that play as well. Yeah, maybe on Victor Hobson against Joe Collier, the big tight end. And he is a big tight end coming six, across the middle. 6'7", 260 for the redshirt senior from Spokane's Mead High. And Gordon Reese, our referee, with the call, holding against Michigan. I wonder why it takes so long to make that call. A lot of discussion for that with the flag coming been. in so quickly. On the defense, before the ball was tipped, that's a 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Part of the deliberation as to, yes, whether they hold the interferences that were occurred prior to the ball being tipped. Once yep. it's tipped, you're allowed to go through anybody. But it's a first down as a result for Washington. 
at the Michigan 43 yard line. Alexis, good hold for him. Inside the 30 and an arm tackle by Cato June. The guy who electrified this crowd with his first carry a year ago. Khalif Burns providing the blocking that time down the side for Rich Alexis. See if we get a look at the left side blocking. You got Nick Newton in there, the tight end coming through. But Rich Alexis, his explosiveness getting through that line of scrimmage and a good job by Cato June Todd to bring him down or it, it would have been a deja vu of that Miami game. Touchdown Husky. 18 yards for Alexis and another first down. Cody with time. The slant Elstrom can't hang on. Sandwiched by a pair of defenders that time. June was there along with Marlon Jackson, the cornerback, the freshman from Sharon, Pennsylvania. Tough throw in there to uh, Todd Elstrom. Not a lot of room to operate, but uh, should have held on to the ball. Todd Elster would like to have the opportunity back. Watch the throw. This is what I like the best about Cody Pickett. He's able to throw the bullet. Last year, Tuyasa Sopo had a nice arm, but uh, coaches feel that Cody Pickett's arm is stronger than last year. Once again, from the 25, Alexis empties out the backfield. All kinds of time for there if he wants to run it. Now one on one and gets met solidly. He tried to bluff more a little bit, but the redshirt sophomore had nothing to do with that fake. Uh, Cody did the right thing. I tried to force it downfield and may have been a little breakdown in the route running on that play. Todd. It looked like there was nothing there at all. You make a good point, Sonny, though. His decision making has been outstanding so far. I think so. I, he hasn't forced anything. Uh, he's made some good option calls. And, keeping his own number and, and running it up. I want Michigan to stop at one time. But here's a big third down play. The Huskies would like to continue the, the run and get a first down here. Elstrom and Ware to the bottom. Paul Arnold to the top. And Cody checking off now. Quick drop, Elstrom inside the 20 and it pulled everything. There's a lot of movement up front. I think they're going to blow this one dead. Somebody jumping on the outside for Washington. I didn't see it on the line. I think one of the receivers down to the bottom made the jump, Sonny. Yeah, there's uh, when you've got the, the nickel package out there. You knew somebody's going to be coming from one direction, and Cody took a little bit of time to call that play. Full start, offense, five yards from the previous spot, still third down. Well, you got a lot of young receivers out there. You know, Paul Arnold making the transition from running back to wide receiver, and I think he's done a great job of getting over and playing the wideouts. May have been a little aggressive. First call of the game against the Huskies, you saw from Michigan, two penalties for 15 yards. They had only two penalties for 20 yards in their entire game last week against Miami of Ohio. So a little more interesting now as they need to get it down to the 15-yard line. Looks like a little bit of a confusing sideline there. Cody coming over as well. Now the play clock is not running at all, and the game clock is. The game clock should not be running at all after that illegal procedure. And a timeout has been called by Washington as well. The offense talking with Steve Axman on the sidelines. A third and long situation for the Huskies. We'll be back to see what they can do to keep the drive alive. So Washington on top now early in the second quarter after the field goal from John Anderson. He's getting set to kick off now after driving the initial kick of the game all the way through the end zone. Todd Howard and Charles Drake are deep once again for Michigan. There you see Anderson capping it officially with a 43-yard field goal. Seven-play, 46-yard drive, the best of the game for either team thus far. And Anderson hits another boomer. It'll go all the way back into the end zone and be down there. Michigan will take it on the 20-yard line. Don't forget, coming up tonight at 10 o'clock, 
It's the Northwest Sports Report. You can get the latest in the Mariner highlights from today's game against Baltimore, including the farewell tribute to Cal Ripken Jr. Seahawks open the season in Cleveland, along with all the latest Northwest sports news and headlines. When you want to know what's going on around the region, it's the Northwest Sports Report tonight at 10 right here on Fox Sports Net. Michigan with 52 yards of total offense now in the game, as opposed to 80 for Washington. Navarre on the rollout this time, one-on-one, -on -one, trying to find his man as Navarre gets hit. Great downfield coverage that time by Washington, <laughs> and he had to throw it away. Well, hello, Larry Triplett is what John Navarre said. <laughs> yeah, good play action there. It looked like you had something cooking downfield, but Larry Triplett, wise enough to recognize the play action coming out. Very legitimate hit, put a little pressure on him. It's one thing you want to do against John Navarre is try and get a helmet on him. He's a big guy, not real mobile back there, Todd, so get a few licks, make him a little bit more nervous when he's throwing that football. He tried to find Marquise Walker that time and Rock Alexander with good one-on-one -on -one coverage as well. Michigan again, five in the pattern in an empty backfield. A scrambling by the Huskies defensively and the slant route incomplete again. Trying to find B.J. Askew, the running back, lined out in that slot position down to the bottom. It's kind of interesting that they put five guys out, but one's a running back, fullback, tailback kind of guy. The other one's a tight end, so you really only have three true wideouts on that spread formation. Ben Madavi on the coverage that time. They try to get a running back isolated on the back, and it seems as though, Sonny, they've looked to their running backs in that five-man set every time. Well, they haven't, you know, Ben Madavi's due to score in this game, so they ought to keep uh -huh. going to his side. Third and long, Navarre again with plenty of time behind his intended receiver, trying to find Walker once again. I tell you, that time he throws the football, hits the guy in the numbers, they've got a first down, but not a very accurate throw that time by John Navarre. A lot of woofing in the stands and an equal amount of woofing on the field right now after that incompletion. Well, I felt he had enough time to deliver the football Sharply, but right there you can see not even close that time to Marquise Walker. And Wanda Me Davis, hey, that converted receiver himself over there having a good time. Yeah, defense to offense and back to defense again for Wanda Me. Omari Lowe also there. <laughs> Fourth punt of the game coming up now for Epstein, who's averaged a little under 33 yards a kick. Well, let's see if the Huskies can get a little pressure on, on this one. Much shorter kick this time. And Willie telling his teammates to get away from it. Gets a hole for Michigan. Well, about a 44-yard punt will be down at the Husky 36-yard line. Well, Todd, it looks like the Huskies are starting to gain a little advantage on that field starting position right now. And we saw what happened last time. They ended up with a score. So hopefully Keith Gilbertson can keep that going for those Husky fans out there. Talked about Gilby, the offensive coordinator. Phenomenal mark for him, Sonny. 23 and one when he's been Washington's offensive coordinator. Nice percentage. <laughs> and what happened? What, what's wrong with the slip up there, Keith? <laughs> yeah. All right, from the 36-yard line, Matthias Wilson, the up back. Hurst, the deep man, gets the ball. A good bit of power running that time. He really had to squirt through a bit of a hole. But. I tell you, Carl Diggs has done yeah. a good job in there filling in for Eric Brackens for Michigan. We knew that both the inside backers had some tender ankles. and looked like uh, Eric Brackens will not be back in, but Carl Diggs has been all over those tailbacks this yeah. afternoon. They talked up Diggs a lot. He made a fine play there along with Dave Pearson, a reserve on the defensive line. The live formation, Walker the up man this time. Cody again with plenty of time. Out right, caught by Williams, midfield, and a first down, Washington. I think those two are developing into a tandem in a hurry. I tell you what, if I was Cody Pickett, I'd think about it. <laughs> I would definitely be part of the action with uh, Reggie Williams. Going down the uh, elevator with some of the Michigan coaches uh, talking about, yeah, that's a kid that we'd like to have had. And I said, well, you know, he's got the right colors on. <laughs> yeah, Michigan and every other school in the country. He yeah. was highly sought after. Knocked out of bounds by Jeremy Lasur and Cato June, but another first down. Second catch of the game for Williams now for 31 yards. Hurst squirting through again. Breaks free of the leg tackle. He's close to another first down. 
Marcus Curry coming out of the secondary to make the tackle. Good job leaping over in there by loving the line. You look at Elliott Zajac 75 trying to stay on his man and looks like that was Carl Diggs that just missed the tackle. So he occupied him long enough for Willie Hurst to gain an extra five yards. They'll bring the sticks out to measure this one. Sonny, that's one of the deceiving things about Willie Hurst. You think of him more as a speed back, but he has pretty good power when he has to drive between the tackles. And, and it's a on the other side of it, when he looks like he uh, in the open field, guys don't catch him like you thought they could in the past. He's, he's, got, he's doing it all. Gives a first down. That makes it 10 yards officially on the carry. Well, you know, Willie Hurst is 200 pounds. You kind of, he doesn't look at amongst all the giants down there, but see right there, it's not a bad rushing average. 23 yards on six carries. Hey, being a captain this year, too, Willie Hurst is a good leader. Uh, great for all those young players out there on that offensive side. Elstrom and Williams, the receivers. Now Hurst will empty out the backfield on first down. Quick slant, caught by Collier. He'll get about six. Dragged down there by Larry Foote, along with some help from Dan Rumashek. Yeah, it's interesting to see Rumashek just fall off on the big tight end, help out in coverage that time. Just a nice quick flip to the big 6-7 receiver. Again, if you joined us late, Jeremy Stevens will sit out the first half of the ball game. Bobby Howe walking to the secondary. Down to play with maybe a little bit here, and that's what they'll do. Passing formation under some pressure. Now throws Williams has it. Flag thrown late in the backfield. Williams inside the five. The flag should be for roughing the passer. It'll be first and goal, Washington. I tell you, on that play, I was thinking, Cody, throw the ball, throw the ball, throw the ball. He finally does, and of course, Reggie Williams with just enough room to hang on, elude the tackler, and, and excite the Husky crowd going down the sideline. Naked bootleg, foot, the only guy in his way right there. He gives him about four yards of room to operate with. And I tell you, if not been for pursuit, that would have definitely been a score. That was a fine looking cross body throw as well, Sonny, yes. on that rollout. It's the toughest throw to make is when on going to your left, getting your body square. First down. They add the penalty on, makes it a first and goal for Washington. Cody Pickett has now completed eight of his last nine passes for 88 yards. There's an example of what you were talking about, Todd, throwing against right hand, going to the left, and delivering the football where you need to. And again, big target, good player, and uh, you've got great results. Lloyd Carr waiting to see what his defensive unit can come up with. They'll spot this one inside the three-yard line. Wilson and Hurst in the backfield in a double tight end set. First off the right side, knife down right at the line of scrimmage. Carl Diggs with the tackle. Carl Diggs with the tackle, but Larry Foote with the action to create the tackle for him coming through the line very quickly, disrupting. There's nobody there to block Carl Diggs. Loss of a yard and a half or so on that one for Hurst. They'll spot it at the four yard line. Here's your test of your young offensive line. Some power football against the Michigan front. They can trip him for a moment, looking. Has time, trying to find someone. Now turns the corner, and he'll be knocked out at about the three-yard line. Foot there once again. Kevin Ware at the back of the end zone. Not open, really. Wait, and uh, Cody Pickett's waiting for him to make a move, find an open air, open space back there. But Cody did. There's that decision-making process again, Todd. Not forcing it back to the back of the end zone, keeping it for himself, and they still got another play of third down and try and get into the end zone for the touchdown. Wilson in first. Option. Trying to turn that one again, developed poorly, and they'll be bottled up right at the line of scrimmage once more. Well, I don't know, but uh, you, yeah. there's the look when seven has to become three. That's the look of a head coach right there. 
Well, I'll tell you, you know, you've got a great young receiver that's 6'4 and outshines all those other DBs for Michigan. I, I just love to float that baby up there and let Reggie Williams make a play. Anderson hit from 43. This one will be from to the 22 and a flag thrown. Michigan says it's against the Huskies. Gordon Reese and crew conferring. Dead ball foul. Illegal snap on the offense. That's a five yard penalty from the previous spot. Still fourth down. In some ways as a kicker you like having this angle <laughs> a little bit more to be honest. Yeah it's a little bit more room to get them through the uprights. Second minor walk off against the Huskies. As they confer about where to spot the ball. We look at Brent Myers, line coach right there with uh, Rick Neuheisel chirping at him a little bit. All right, that'll make it officially now a 26-yard attempt. Off the left hash marks. Right where a right-footed kicker prefers to have it. And perfect. Well, they had it inside the five, first and goal, couldn't punch it across. The Huskies have to settle for three, but they extend their lead midway through the second quarter. The junior kicker, one of the best in America, he's nailed it all so far. Double tight ends for Michigan from the five. Looking to throw, there's the one-on-one -on -one for Walker, out of bounds. Covered by Omari Lowe. Well, there's that little fade route, Todd, you're talking about. Marquise Walker going out for the 6'3 the receiver going against a 6'1 cornerback. You kind of forget how tall that uh, Amari, Amari Lowe is. Closed on her very well. Yeah, you got to be real careful not to make too early a contact right there either. And Lowe closed very well, Sonny. You're right. Well, the Husky players are hoping the Husky faithful here will get that noise level up on this play. Sonny, we talked about how locked on the bar was to Walker. Nine of his last ten pass attempts have been thrown for Walker. On third goal, it's Walker inside out. Turn the defender around. Beats low for the touchdown for Michigan. Gave him a little post look and then spun it back around. That's a very nice move by Marquise Walker. And if you're Omari Lowe, one on one, split out wide like that, Todd, you might have to take the bait as well. That was an excellent play call by Michigan. So the Wolverines get the first touchdown of the game. And they'll look to make it a three point lead. Epstein on the attempt. And he remains perfect in point after attempts this season. Very impressive drive for the Wolverines. Some different looks. Better blocking along the front line. And they move back in front in the final minute of the first half. Don't get a chance to see the move from this shot. But Walker had just come in. Quick post route and reversed his field. Cut outside. Now that was a, probably the best throw by Navarro we've seen this afternoon. Actually led his receiver on that one, Todd. Nice bullet throw, John Navarre. Not much hope there for Omari Lowe going against a nice senior receiver. But this coming up now is a part that I've been kind of waiting for with the uh, special teams of the Huskies on the kick return. Do you think Michigan would squib it because of the 17 seconds remaining? I might do that. Well, uh, unless Epstein can drive it all the way through. Yeah, uh, he may try to just drive yeah. it all the way through, and depending on the breeze, if it doesn't make it, we've got some. The Huskies have some exciting guys back there receiving the ball, and uh, we'll see what happens. Marquise Walker with his first touchdown reception of the season, the second touchdown pass of the year for John Navarre, as they took advantage of the good punt return and had short field to go to take the lead. There's one of the exciting guys. He's had a hundred yard return before. Rock Alexander up in front of Paul Arnold. And the Wolverines bringing Dave Petrozello, one of their offensive linemen, off the field early 
as Epstein gets set to kick it off. Arnold standing just outside the five. And they do elect to make the squib. It'll come back to Arnold at about the 13 yard line. And he'll take it out just short of the 30. Well, here goes a knee in halftime. Yeah, some, <laughs> some more scrambling there amongst the teams. Charles Drake and John Spitek leading the tacklers for Michigan. Cody Pickett, 8 of 12 passing in the first half of play. And do you even dare to try to throw one along here just for the heck of it, Sonny, or are you just going to take yeah, the They're going to take a knee here. They've yeah. got everybody back there to protect the quarterback. Got Elstrom back behind him even. Either that or they're suddenly going single wing, and that will be it. So Michigan gets the only touchdown of the first half as they score in the final seconds. Walker with the catch, and the Wolverines have the lead as we go to halftime. The perfect scenario for another come from behind Husky victory to kick off the 2001 season. We'll be back with our halftime activities right after this on Fox Sports Net. We're ready to start the third quarter at Husky Stadium. Michigan to kick off to Washington. The Wolverines leading it by three. Rock Alexander, Paul Arnold deep for Washington. Arnold backpedaling inside the end zone. And Alexander convinces him to keep it there. He thought about bringing that one out as well. Take a look at our first half highlights and the Wolverines got on the board first in unusual fashion. Well, going at that freshman kicker and coming up, McLaughlin not able to get it off. We saw Marquise Cooper with the block. John Anderson with a pair of field goals. This one from 43, he added one from 26. Yeah, John Anderson happy to kick the old, I guess the team from the Big Ten. Didn't get to see it, but Marquise Walker, and that blocked the uh, punt, also with a great move for the score. So it's 9-6 Michigan, Jeremy Stevens in the lineup for Washington as we open the second half. One of the favorite receivers a year ago, and Rich Alexis starts in the backfield and gets the first carry to pick up five. Huskies coming out with the double tight. You got Joe Collier on one side, Jeremy Stevens for the first action this season. See the big guy right there. Huskies need him. He's a great threat down the middle of the field as a receiver and also the block. Elstrom in the lineup as well now. Williams to the bottom, Elstrom to the top. Alexis carrying it in, stops short of the line of scrimmage. Michigan just swarming to the ball that time. Huskies in the first half. Got bottled up a great deal of the time. Gave up the safety, made two drives. The second one had the potential to be a touchdown drive. Then the punt and taking the knee to end the half. Yeah, two times they had decent field position. They were able to get some points off it, Todd. And yeah, they had a first and goal inside the five on the one drive and had to settle for the field goal. Lots of time again for Pickett. And there's Stevens bouncing off a tackler. Up to nearly the 45-yard line before he's dragged down by Cato June. And immediately, Jeremy Stevens paying dividends. Well, you work out in the spring, you work out during two days with your starting tight end. Cody Pickett can read one and four. Jeremy Stevens, the guy right here, stepping, sitting strong in the pocket, delivering the football. And Jeremy Stevens, an element that the Huskies didn't have in the first half. Husky fans are seeing it right away. In this case, one and four adds up to 19 and another first down out the 44 yard line. That's some funny math there, son. <laughs> it's new math. Stick with me. It'll make more sense. What they really hope is that someday one and four adds up to six. Lots of time again on the slant in route. Looked like a lot of contact, no flag. The Huskies are jumping this time on their sideline. Elstrom was the intended receiver, and it looked as though LeSueur made some contact prior to the ball's arrival. Well, LeSueur was certainly in a position to make a play, good or bad. Husky fans feel he had his left hand on the back of Todd Elstra a little bit early, but his, excuse me, his right hand, but his left hand was there to knock the ball down. I thought it was a pretty good play by LeSueur myself. Wow. 
Hey. I'm shocked the quarterback gives a DB credit. Hey, you know, once in a while it happened. Wow. Preserve that piece of tape. <laughs> Wilson, the up man for Alexis on second down. Backside pressure gets away. Tough throw. Did Stevens hang on? No. no. Thought he might have it on a second chance and couldn't. That's the first time really where I think we've seen Cody force one a little bit. Under pressure, <laughs> still nearly made the reception. Well, again, he's honing in on Jeremy Stevens early on in his third quarter, but that time he had to. Uh, the pressure from the Michigan backer coming through to the right side here. Looked like it was basically the defensive end, Shante Orr, 53, getting through there cleanly. The Huskies converting their first third down of the ball game a little bit ago. They were 0 for 6 in the first half. Pressure picked up well to the sideline, overthrown a little bit out in front of Williams that time. Excuse me, that's not Williams. That's over hooks. hooks for the first time. Seven instead of one. That new look numbering system, and Lloyd Carr's team is going to get the ball back. Well, Wilbur Hooks ran a pretty good route. He was right just beyond the first down marker, but Cody Pickett had a little too much mustard on it. Let him just a little bit too much. Breeze picking up a little bit now around the stadium. Julius Curry back deep for Michigan. But Laughlin set to kick once again. There's a great combination. Distance plus the height. Drives Curry back inside the five. Has a good lane up the middle, though. Stripped up just over the 30-yard line. Anthony Kelly making the stop there for Washington. Curry sort of nondescript last week. His longest run back was 13. He's had several good returns for Michigan today. Oh, that was an excellent return, 23 yards. And, uh, you know, Curry is an exciting ball player for Michigan. But that time we saw a little bit of the punting ability of McLaughlin. That time, pretty good hang time and good distance. New up man, Dave Armstrong, the fullback for Michigan on first down. Perry gets the handoff to the left side, pursued there, and a great open field run and tackle by Owen Biddle. Young man awarded a scholarship this year at the start of the season by Rick Neuheisel. Well, Owen Biddle has certainly deserves a, a scholarship from the Huskies. That time was able to get outside. Again, that delay we saw in the first half from Michigan trying to get their linemen set up. That time the back, Perry scoots to the outside, but Biddle was not going to let him gain big yardage. Sonny, you raise a good point there. I think that delay allowed them to establish a better ground game late in the second quarter. Do a little trap blocking off the delay. That time he busted outside for a short game. Up the middle, the Huskies filling some gaps, and they force the run to the outside. Madabi wrapping up along with Alexander and Willis as they take care of Perry. Here's what Michigan did in the first half on possessions. The one interception thrown deep in Husky territory. They'd been bottled up and not scoring any points until off of a good punt return by Curry, they were able to go short field to score yeah. the final minute. Primarily because the Huskies elected to sit on a, in their own territory and not gain any yardage and a short punt with a good return. Madavi with eight tackles now, third down for the Wolverines, into the flat for the tight end, John Rowe, first down over the 45 yard line. He's come up big today. Well, he has in two ball games. You know, Jopru last week scoring that touchdown against Miami of Ohio. But you got to pay attention to him. Someone on the Husky defensive side, not close enough to the receiver. See the coverage right there You're outside. Tied up man to man was uh, <laughs> I'm really tied yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. Rock Alexander and Marquis Walker's arms. <laughs> Lloyd Carr watching his team driving once again. First down, just short of midfield. Bellamy the motion man. Another delay. Perry, nowhere to go this time. Ty Ellis leading the tackler. Stevens also there. And Marquise Cooper. Yeah, Marquise Cooper is an exciting young ball player. Kind of tweaked his knee a little bit in that last Husky scrimmage, so he's just now getting back to full form. Husky coaches like all their linebackers, Todd, but they really have uh, really talked highly about uh, Marquise Cooper as well as Kai Ellis. Chris Massey comes in as a corner. The Huskies going to a little bit more of a nickel look here. Bring a lineman off. With time, that one way behind that time. Sometimes the bar looks great. That one was so far behind Marquise Walker, it wasn't funny. Well, a lot of it is getting his 
his feet in the right alignment and uh, not opening up and instead of slingshotting the ball out there, that one looked like a slingshot. See the yardage there, neither quarterback over the 100 yard mark yet, excuse me, in the first half. The bar a little over 50%. And this Husky crowd on a third long situation again trying to urge the defense on. Michigan needs to get to the Husky 43. Lamar with time one on one. And again Walker breaks a tackle. He is dangerous and gets the first down with some great open field effort. That is the 100th career reception for Marquise Walker and it keeps the Michigan drive alive. I tell you, if you're going to come up and tackle Marquise Walker, you better keep your eyeballs on his belt buckle. Because if you take him away from that with the moves that he has and the quickness, he's going to get by it. I thought his knee may have been close to being down on this play. Let's see if it is. Doesn't look like it. Good balance by Walker to stay up. <laughs> Pretty darn close, but an excellent job. Good camera work right there to see where his knee was. And exciting ball player. Got away from Amari Lowe, and you don't say that too often. He can make a quarterback like Navarre look very good statistically. It's a short throw, and then he stretches it out. That old yards after the catch. Well, it's not bad coaching, you know, when you say, hey, look, I got a guy that's very athletic. He's 6'3", he's a wide receiver. Why don't I just do a spot route out there, get him the ball, and let him do his and, thing? And we can get him isolated one-on-one. -on -one. Exactly. Williams with a good first half, but Walker now picking up his seventh reception of the ball game for 64 yards. Back in the lineup, Askew to the left side, and he gets a good gain before Lowe knocks him down. You know, a lot of talk going into the game here about Michigan wanting to get some answers with regard to its offensive line. They're getting some pretty good answers here over the last couple drives. Well, they've been helped by some individual play, such as Walker on a couple of receptions for first downs. But also, you, you look at them now, Michigan is mixing it up very well. Short passes, they've done a power game, they've done a little delay run, and uh, also I isolation passes with Walker. And they've picked up Washington's pressure well in the passing situation. Askew breaks a couple tackles at the line, gets it to the 30-yard line, and another first down. Biddle and Kai Ellis there to finally stop him along with Stevens. Well, Mar Marquise Cooper has been in there. You see him going out now, but that time he had a chance to make a tackle. But against Askew like this right there, man, you got to wrap him up. You can't stick your arm out there and think that the guy's 225 pounds is going to fall down. And yet another first down for the Wolverines who are driving smartly down the field here looking to extend their lead. Yes, a triple inside, and it comes to Walker. Gets the corner, and another first down, knocked out about the 17-yard line. All we needed was a couple more laterals and a pass. <laughs> well, Michigan ran the reverse twice last week, and big double reverse today by the Wolverines. See Perry going right. Coming back to the right is uh, Marquise Walker. Not a bad guy to hand off to if you're going to, but Huskies fortunate on this one to have some flow catch up to him. 13 more yards rushing. Michigan now with 185 yards of total offense and a long drive. Need some pressure on the quarterback. Huskies got to get back there. Ask you up the middle. Bottled up nicely. Ben Madabi wrapping up. Stevens there to close down the hole initially along with Ellis. Washington trying to come up with the bend but not break stop now as Michigan moves deeper into the red zone. That just before halftime. Play action for Navarre into the flat, a diving catch, so they're not able to turn it upfield. And it's Jopru, the tight end, once again. Boys having a big day. Jopru has been open. That was an excellent catch out in the flat. Did it without a shoe. <laughs> Sonny, they've really taken advantage of a lot of short routes, little square outs into the flat all day long. Well, you've got to bang it in there. You know, one thing that coming into the game, they wanted to be 
A lot of guys tied to the line of scrimmage because of Askew and the power running game of Michigan. But they've had some success running the football with those delays, which opens up those short pass routes to the tight end. Third catch for Jopru. Askew, the only running back. Walker to the top of the screen. They're looking for him under pressure and drop. Larry Triplett breaks through. Well, I'll tell you what, Larry Triplett had time to get back there because the coverage out there, Amari Lowe, Greg Carruthers, all the other safeties had all the receivers covered. They only had two guys out on that side, Todd, with four defensive back. Triplett getting around his defender and Sonny, significant sack here because now you talk field goal and Washington could move back in front if they're able to put a touchdown drive together. And John Navarre is the holder, probably the tallest holder in the Big Ten Conference. Epstein with a 38-yard attempt has plenty of distance and extends the lead to six. He nailed a 22-yard field goal a week ago, so he's perfect in both his attempts so far. And Michigan extends the lead. They have run off the last 10 points of the ball game. Husky cheerleaders trying to get the crowd fired up a little bit as Michigan takes the lead by six points. Epstein getting set to kick off for the Wolverines. And the Huskies make a change in the return structure. Alexander back there, but we will get our first look at another highly touted freshman for Washington, Charles Frederick, to the top of your screen. There he is, the young man from Florida, the latest from Pope John Paul II High School. They go Alexander's way, they go very deep, and Rock will take an E. We're going to see that number 10 out a few times before this season's through, Sonny. Well, I tell you, look at the two kickers today in this ball game. They might have to move the kickoff mark down back to the 30. <laughs> <laughs> what a great job by both kickers to get, kick the ball out of the end zone for no returns. Well, there are a few NFL scouts that take notice of those legs, the rate at which they're going. John Anderson will be around for a little while longer, Husky fans are hoping. Good numbers for Cody Pickett, but the Husky offense has not been able to get it in the end zone thus far. Alexis, the deep back, and from the 20, they look to throw. Williams isolated, makes the grab, breaks a tackle. The freshman trying to get into the end zone, breaks one more, loses the shoe, finally drive down at the six-yard line. The big play man of the day thus far for Washington, Reggie Williams. Boy, what a play. Isolate your big man out there. Only 18 years old, but right there breaking inside of Howard. And let's see how he can get it going here. Lucky for the Wolverines, that foot was able to knock a shoe off just to slow him down enough. 74-yard reception for Williams. Option from the six. Turns the corner, can't get far. Wrapped back up with the line of scrimmage, Sean Lazarus leading the tacklers for Michigan. Okay, they ran one play this time. I, I'd like to see the Huskies put the ball in the air. This time you've got Jeremy Stevens back in the ball game. Talented wideouts. Here's the option again, Sonny. A little bit too slow that time. It took too much time. It was disrupted up front. And Lazarus, you're right, able to really come down the line from the opposite side and make the tackle. Paul Arnold to the left. Will Hooks to the right. right on top of it. Good job by the crew. Chuck Zubin, the line judge, making that call. Yeah, I saw Todd Howard breaking on the football and not very well disguised on that play, Todd, that Wolverines were in good position to make a play had he caught the football. Husky settled for the field goal the last time they were down this deep. Well, they got Reggie Williams in the top of the screen now. Elstrom slotted inside Arnold to the bottom. Under pressure, going to be dropped outside the 15-yard line. Hung in there a little too long, perhaps, that time. Jake Freisinger, the defensive lineman, coming up with the stop for Michigan, the redshirt senior. Yeah, Freisinger coming back this year. 
Wolverines are hoping to have a big year out of him and this time he's just pushing his way back there. You see Todd Backer not able to keep his balance and stay with him and allowing him to get back and get the sack. Anderson looking for his third field goal of the game. He's been two for two, 43 and 26. This one from 31. And pulled it. So Michigan again shuts Washington down. The Huskies have been inside the 10 twice, and they have just three points to show for it. A big defensive stand for Michigan here midway through the third quarter. Washington still trails by six. The Wolverines hold. They have the ball at their own 20-yard line after the miss by Anderson. To the right side, they'll pick up good yardage here. Ellis with the high tackle that time as he horse collars Chris Perry. He'll get eight, though, on the play. Sonny, this is a crucial series right here for the Washington defense. Well, look at that, just reaching out there, the Michigan line, just trying to get to the point of attack, get on somebody, and let the big back gain some yards. Yeah, they, they, they need to hold them back, or you're right, Todd. Uh, guys like Chris Perry can't have this much room to run the football, but not on first down. You see a little of the speed of Ellis there. He got Jamon Willis out of the way. Askew tripped up in the backfield. I think Triplett got a hand on him. They'll save the uh, stop him from getting the first down as a result. Spotted out at the 29, third and a yard for Michigan. Well, Michigan's had some success on third down conversions right there. Yeah, remember they were struggling early. Over 50% now. Power formation for them with Askew in the backfield. Cuts back over the left side and has it up for the first down. Slides out to about the 44. Spencer Morona, Owen Biddle there, along with Wanda B. Davis. And again, Askew getting the time when he gets to the line of scrimmage to go ahead and pick the hole then. Well, he's a big back, and Michigan has always had the big lineman. You see the first downs now, Michigan with the edge 12-10, but Husky's doing a lot of substitutions, trying to stay in that trench game with the Wolverine. From the 34, Walker was out on the last play. That one is going to go for a reception. Look, the Huskies, you can see, say it was thrown underneath. Calvin Bell makes the grab for Michigan. Sophomore from Simi Valley, California. Good job. A lot of time to deliver the football, and Calvin Bell just going down to get it. Yeah, well underneath the ball, too. Yeah. That time, Navarre had to throw it low and away, and Michigan's able to pick up a big first down. They pick up five on that one. Jabru again, the motion man. Navarre again with plenty of time and a misread that time. The receiver cut back inside. The throw went to the outside sideline and it was well over the head of Ronald Bellamy. Yeah, Bellamy arguing that uh, Rock had, Rock Alexander had some of the jersey, but that was not a very well thrown ball. It really didn't matter that much anyway. He was <laughs> headed the wrong way on the pass. I think he was throwing it to Lloyd over there. And again, a big test right here for the Washington defense. Credit to the Michigan line. There have been very few times when Navarre has been pressured in these passing situations. There's a little bit of pressure. Gets away from a couple, throws on the run, and incomplete. So they were able to flush him that time. Yeah, Larry Triplett able to knife through the middle. Bring a little bit of time. Wanda Me Davis trying to come from the top side, but uh, another overthrown pass by John Navarre. Saw Randy Hart giving encouragement to his defenders. Rick Neuheisel there as well, and Epstein will be on to punt once again. His sixth punt of the day. Hurst is back deep. Takes him towards the near boundary. And Hurst scrambling around there. I thought there was a block in the back that time. He might have gotten yeah. away with one Very there. Very lucky, yeah. Yeah. Willie takes it out around the 30-yard line. And again, 
the Huskies have been getting big plays. They just haven't been able to go ahead and punch it on into the end zone. Washington trailing by six in the closing stages of the third quarter. Huskies empty out the backfield from the 30. Walker, the motion man. Stevens, again, ping-ponging off defenders. It takes a couple to wrap him up. Out around the 35, Jeremy Lasur and Larry Foote on the tackle. This is the 11th meeting between Washington and Michigan. Wolverines holding an advantage in the series, but the Huskies have won four out of the last six between these two teams. They'll have to figure out a way to get into the end zone. They're going to win this one. Confusion, Hurst spins away, gets close to the line of scrimmage. Foot and Howard there to make sure he gets no closer. Even on a clean handoff, Todd, I really don't think Willie Hurst would have gained any yardage on that side. Michigan's doing an excellent job of getting penetration across the line of scrimmage, disrupting that, that especially on that play. Seems like Cody Pickett's kind of held in check, except for a few fade routes and a couple passes to Todd or to, to uh, Jeremy Stevens. Need to open it up just a little bit for the young man and give him some room and let him make some plays. Something a little open to convert here, keep the drive going. Lots of time, defender falls down, Elstrom, the best route runner around, picks up a key first down out at the 42 yard line. That time the Husky linemen were able to pick up the little games being played from the defensive front. Watch the move, one comes in, the other one goes around, they were able to pick it up, allowing time for Cody Pickett, and you're right, Todd Elstrom runs those routes like you're supposed to run them. They say stop on the 42, you stop on the 42. Yeah. He may not have wheels, but he's got traction. <laughs> <laughs> he had Lasur drop down on the cut route yeah. and a big move right there to pick it up for Washington. A little adjustment again by Cody at the line of scrimmage, making sure everybody has the assignments. Michigan showing blitz and jump. And yeah, behind the receiver else from that time. Didn't get a flag either. They got back out of the zone in time and no contact. Todd being a regular receiver, Todd Elstrom, 18. You know, see Lloyd Carr having a nice stroll there on the sidelines in the shade, enjoying himself. But Todd Elstrom with the hamstring injury, Todd, has been out for a lot of practices. And it still takes timings, takes a lot of work. And so he's still working himself back into that coordination with Cody Pickett. Yeah, both Elstrom and Justin Robbins have been bothered with hamstring problems. You see Washington again has better numbers at the half, but the numbers that matter are those up on the board, and they haven't gotten a touchdown yet. Under protection for Paul Arnold, his first grab. Good tackle there, because if he gets a couple more steps, he may turn that one towards the end zone. Todd Howard wrapping him up securely. Yeah, quick toss out there to Paul Arnold. You're right, if you, you don't wrap him up, he's got that explosive speed. He'd be gone down the sideline. Again, on these type of routes, are you gonna check off, get the ball out there as quickly as you can and let your guy make the moves? Sonny, this is where I think we're gonna see the Huskies be dangerous this season is around that perimeter. There's so much speed available. Right now, though, another third down test. Arnold and Williams, the receivers. Pump fake, spins away. Tackled short of the first down. They'll rule him down by contact as well as the ball goes flying away. And it'll be a fourth down and about two to go for Washington. Well, early decision time in the second half here, but. And the decision is to punt. Got the whole fourth quarter to play, and I'm sure Rick Neuheisel was hoping that the young punter can knock one out inside the 10-yard line, or at least keep Michigan back deep in their own end. And we'll see how the freshman does here, whether he can get a coffin corner boot. Julius Curry has been dangerous today returning for Michigan. <laughs> Just don't kick it low for Curry. And he does try to aim it for the corner. Curry will take it at about the 16-yard line. So a 34-yard punt, but it's down inside the 20-yard line. And the Washington defense will be called upon to make another stand. Really, this can be a battle of field position right here 
And the Huskies could be in decent shape in the fourth quarter when they get the ball back if they can make a stop here. Well, you know, the, the, the uh, Michigan offense has been on a little bit more, it seems, than the than the uh, Washington offense. So hopefully the Husky defense can really tighten up here, give it a really hard go, and, and keep the field position. And they'll have the breeze in their backs, what little breeze there is in the fourth quarter. Final play of the third, ball popping free again, but they rule it down by contact. Nobody uh, scrambling after it anywhere. As the ball carried that time by Chris Perry once again to bring the third quarter to an end. Washington again with the end of the goalpost, but no touchdowns. They trailed the way to the fourth. We start the fourth quarter, Michigan leading it by six. And a second down here for the Wolverines. They'll give it to Perry, bottled up, tries to go the other way and nearly slipped away from Ben Madavi. He'll be close to a first down, but Sonny, we could have a completely different wrinkle to this game a few moments ago. You look at the call right here with the running back, Perry. Look at the football. It's out right there, well before his knee hits the ground. That was the final play of the third quarter. They ruled him down prior to the fumble, but Washington could have been in excellent shape to open the quarter if they'd been able to spot that one. Third and short. And flags everywhere. They saved Michigan jump. This could be a big break for Washington. Before the snap, full start offense. By the previous spot, still third down. Rick Neuheisel looking for his first win against Michigan. He was 0-2 while at Colorado. But he was successful as an assistant coach. Relatively penalty-free game thus far. And now a third and long situation. We had his eyes locked this way to Walker the entire way and still converts it. He was looking at Walker before the ball was even snapped. And oh, yeah. Still get the first down. And Jabru was, again, going down as the middle guy, clearing everything out. Walker just coming in behind him, and Huskies elect to blitz on the play. Anthony Kelly coming in from the right side. Nice little pocket to throw the football in. Never looked up, never looked away, and Walker most dangerous target for the Wolverines today gets him another first down. The senior receiver knew exactly where he had to be. Again, a nice cut here by Perry out over the 40 and more. Gets behind his blockers into Washington territory inside the 40-yard line. He ran a little fake reverse off of that and stretched a huge hole as a result. Plus got a good downfield block from Walker. Yeah, I thought the Huskies might try to just punch at the football that time since None of them were being very successful tackling Perry. You might as well go for the football. Nice little juke there again on uh, look like Jimmy Newell. Not able to come up with a, a person. That's a nice little play that you know when the reverses work for you you can do different things off him and that time certainly the Wolverines were able to do it. Chris Perry ran for 32 yards last week today 21 carries 90 yards and threatening to go for more here but Washington gets him Ellis the first tackler. This drive taking the Wolverines back in front of the Huskies in terms of total offense as well. Yeah, they're starting to turn it out down there. The big guys up front. Looking like a little gas there for Perry. Michigan continuing to keep time of possession as well. The action for Perry. Underneath toss. That's a great tackle there. Good job. Very low wrapping it up as Askew was the receiver. They try to get the ball to him in different ways, and Omari Lowe stayed with him that time. He appears to be a little shaken up. He went off the field early at the end of the half. Can't tell quite what it is, but you're right. Play action here with Perry, who's been successful running the football, and a throwback to 
B.J. Askew had it not been for Omari Lowe with a great tackle he may have been down near the first down marker. Lowe's going to stay in so let's see what he does in terms of coverage here. Michigan needs to get it just inside the 30 yard line. Navar again with a wide open look Walker keeps his balance first down at the 23. Sonny you go back and watch this though the entire front in front of John Navarre is wide open. It's been cleared out for him. He's got a perfect view. It's like the rushing lanes right there from the defensive front are getting botched up a little bit, right? Look at that. I mean, it's like a super highway right there of the bigger kind. And Navarre, no problem seeing Walker, of course, number four. Walker's ninth catch of the day. He has 86 yards receiving now, and they sprint to the line of scrimmage. Give it to Askew around the right side. Flag thrown. Looks like a hold against the Wolverines. Carruthers running Askew out of bounds. Yeah, been a hold on Anthony Kelly on the rush side of the ball for the Huskies, 47. Tried to come out with a little attack offense right there. Right now, this Washington defense wants to give up no more than three points, if that at all to try to stay in touch in this game. Holding offense, 10 yards to previous spot, still first down. Gordon Reese will mark that off. Rest of the crew today, Walt Wolf's the umpire, old friend of ours from Spokane. Cleo Robinson, the head linesman, Chuck Zubin, the line judge, Colin McDermott, the field judge, Matt Gilchrist, the side judge, and Jack Foliard, the back judge. Very experienced group here today. From the 34 yard line. Little toss underneath to Walker again. Not Walker, rather. It is Perry who had lined up out there, and he gets great yardage on that slip screen back inside the 20. Yeah, that's been a big play for a lot of teams. Uh, that time, Perry able to show his receiving skills and running after the catch. Boy, Michigan is doing a little bit of everything, Todd. They are really mixing it up. Yeah, not what you'd call traditional Michigan football either, Sonny. Now, well, you know, over the years, they've had such gifted athletes, it allows them to do a lot of different things. You've got big backs that can catch the ball out of the backfield, big linemen up front that can block straight ahead, and uh, quarterbacks that are tall and ranging can deliver the football. And that's a big play, because after a first and 20, they get 16 of it back just on that one play alone. Now they can plunge Askew up the middle. He's stacked up short of the first down. Stevens and Carruthers combined. Zach Tuiasosopo. And Willis also there in a third and short situation now for Michigan again. Yeah, one thing about Michigan's offense, Todd, everything they're doing right now is keeping everything in, in the field of play. Clock is moving well. It's getting close to 10 minutes left in the fourth period here, and they're knocking on the door again. And they know that their defense has not given up a touchdown yet. They've been very tough in the red zone this afternoon. Eric Rosell, another tight end, comes in. Timeout called by Michigan on this third and two situation. Five minutes gone in this fourth quarter of play. Another big test for the Washington defense when we return. Back in Seattle, a gorgeous afternoon in terms of weather at Husky Stadium, not in terms of the scoreboard thus far. And a crucial play here for the Husky defense. It's Perry, met head on. Wrapped up Marquise Cooper, the first to get to him, and they stop him right back at the line of scrimmage. Great penetration that time from the front four against Chris Perry in that big offensive line. That time, and then allowing the backers to come up and put the stop on him. See Larry Triplett right there, creating havoc right in the middle, and from the left side, like Marcus Roberson also in there. Hayden Epstein on to attempt a field goal. A 33-yard attempt with the bar of the holder. Blocked by Lowe in the field of play. Off we go. No one is going to catch Rock. Alexander, touchdown, Washington. <laughs> no, you're right. Block 
kicks with scores for both teams, but this one could propel Washington back into the lead. The Huskies, uh, any indication. Anderson with the go ahead point. And Washington back on top. The biggest play of the day, and it was Omari Lowe with the block, and Rock Alexander taking it the rest of the way. What looked to be a move for Michigan to perhaps lock it up turns into a change of fortune for Washington. Anderson set to kick off. Driving it into the end zone once again, eight yards deep, and they'll down it there. Washington special teams, they've been big during Rick Neuheisel's tenure, and they come up big once again in the 2001 season opener. See the block coming from the right side and going over to the left right into the hands of Rock Alexander, and we talked about in the pregame, you're not gonna catch Rock Alexander with this much room to run. Right there, you knew it was all over because they were not gonna catch this young man. Unofficially, that's a 77-yard run, and most importantly, Sonny, it brings this Husky Stadium crowd back to life. Exactly. When they would have gone quiet. They're with sitting over in the heat, and that's, this gets them all jacked up again, as it usually does. If that field goal had gone through, it would have been a nine-point deficit, and they could have taken the crowd out of the game. Instead, one of the most difficult home crowds in the country is ready to add to the confusion right now. I know. You and I talked. It was like, okay, they missed one field goal. They need to score and kick another one. How's this going to work for the Huskies? But never. that's why you work as hard on special teams as you do on other phases of the game, Todd, and you hope that they can come through when they need to. Now, there's a surprise. You would have thought it was the other way around, the way Michigan's been driving. But the Huskies controlling the clock. Second and long here. Underneath route, intercepted! They're gonna run that one back, it's Omari Lowe, touchdown Washington! Right through the hands of Chris Perry, and the Huskies score again! <laughs> what a turnaround! I'll tell you, if your offense can't score, special teams and defense! Todd, right through the hands. Chris Perry right there trying to do too much. Catch the ball and run at the same time. And Omari Lowe. Gee, I wonder who our player of the game might be today so far. <laughs> Anderson on, a big extra point to take it over a touchdown lead. And just like that, hey, there's those two quick scores the Huskies needed. <laughs> Didn't come from the offense. But Omari Lowe, remember, we thought he was a little woozy and banged up. He has come to the fore in the fourth quarter. First interception of the year, and Washington leads it by eight. The stadium is a rockin' in Seattle midway through the fourth quarter. Omari Lowe with his fifth career interception, and he takes this one into the end zone to give Washington an eight-point lead. They are going nuts right now in Seattle. Anderson set to kick once again. Think and think and they down it once again. Start to see a little bit of frustration there by Charles Drake. He would love to try to bust one. Navarre looking for a nice safe play out there to his tailback, Chris Perry. Chris Perry took his eyes off it because 47, Anthony Kelly had come into his view and when you do that, ball's thrown hard, can't catch it. Omari Lode, the benefactor of that nice play. Now there's still plenty of time for Michigan. 
Lloyd Carr doesn't have to necessarily open it up, but he does go to an open look again. Behind the intended receiver, and again, that was Perry out in the flat, covered by Rock Alexander. Yeah, I'd like to know... Uh, if that pass is caught, though... He could have been gone. He had about two and a half steps, and there wasn't anybody close by. The Wolverines, both backs are in this set. Perry on one side, and Askew on the other. Whistles before the snap. And this will go against the Wolverines. Boy, Michigan's doing a very good job trying to get the playoff as quickly as possible with their personnel changes. Huskies not having enough time to make their adjustments to that. But they get a big break right there with the five yards being marked off. You know, so much situational now. Uh, when you bring players in for different downs and distances, Todd, sometimes it could be bad for your defense. But guys like Lloyd Carr are smart enough to try and get that advantage for them. Navarre is still waiting for the play to be signaled in as he stands back behind the offensive unit at about the five yard line. Now he steps in as the ball is spotted ready for play again. Larry Triplett statistically has been credited with no tackles so far today, but he's made some plays. Throw again and batted away by Alexander with his coverage on Perry. Excellent position that time, and that time I looked like Rocky Alexander was reading the quarterback's eyes. Lately, John Navarre has really telegraphed his throws to this side of the field, to the near side. They'll bring one of the tight ends, Seymour, out this time on third and long, and again go to the open backfield. Walker is up to the top, but they have another speedster down to the bottom in Calvin Bell. Looking for Walker, he squats, tries to run away from everybody, but this time the Huskies wrap him up short. Owen Biddle there on the stop, along with some help from Chris Massey. And that time, Owen Biddle coming up with a nice sure tackle, not allowing Walker to get away. Let's look at the pressure coming up the middle here. That time, Navarre, you knew he was going to throw to the right side because his head stayed to the right the whole way. Didn't look off anybody. Good job by Biddle. He didn't over pursue and create more of an alley. Short punt. Huskies had better get away from it. Make sure it doesn't touch. Hurst will pick it up and take it to the 45-yard line. Wise decision there when the ball took the bounce. Yeah, he had no choice on that one. He had to grab that ball while it was in his front of his face. Oh, by the way, uh, we'll bring the offense out on the field now. Well, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> well, Huskies scoring 14 points and no plays. About time to get started. Mid-range in the fourth quarter. Washington with a lead as they look to come up with another fourth quarter victory. Fans on their feet. They hope the offense can just burn a lot of clock time right now as well as develop a score. Washington is not going to win the time of possession battle, by the way. Michigan already over 30 minutes time of possession for the game. Huskies don't care about that right now, but that's been one of their hallmarks. Wilson and Alexis in the backfield, and it's Matthias Wilson, the up man, taking it for a good gain out to midfield. Great gain, five yards on first down, and Matthias Wilson, I just love the story on this kid, and living up north in Ferndale and coming down and Great, finally getting a chance to play. Great high school running back as well, and he's been patient and bided his time. Eric Brackens, by the way, in the ball game now for Michigan, made the tackle. Their senior co-captain from Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. I love that. I know. He and his brother both there. I think that's near Dollywood, isn't it? Uh, he's got to be. <laughs> Cody Pickett looking to get a win in his first start. Wilson once again snapped up by the middle of the line. Interesting stat study that Jim Daves and the Husky Sports Information Office brought out. Husky quarterbacks going into this game, the greenest since the 1958 season in terms of the number of passes they've attempted. Well, yeah, you've got the nice transfer in Taylor Barton, who's never just this year got to the University of Washington, and Cody Pickett been here three years, but, you know, when you come off a season where you're one for two, <laughs> not a lot of experience, although two great uh, completions in the Rose Bowl this year. Washington 2 of 11 on third down conversions. 
Stevens, the motion man. They'll look for him underneath, couldn't quite hang on, and a flag thrown late in the backfield. I think Pickett got knocked down well after the release. Is that what you saw? Yes, Simon? I think it's roughing the passer. I think it's the way they took him down as well. Let's take a look here. Todd's looking for one of his favorite receivers. Ball has been gone for like forever, and you get the high-low shot from the defense. It ought to be like a 30-yard penalty. That's like almost a chop block on the offensive line. Murphy the passer, defense, 15 yards, previous spot, automatic first down. Either way, it's a big call for the Huskies, and Lloyd Carr can't be happy. He's got to he know it was a penalty. He yeah. can't argue that one. It also moves the Huskies significantly forward in terms of field position. Could burn another couple minutes off the clock if not anything else for Washington right now. Well, they, the offense have done, have done pretty good when they've had decent field position today. Certainly on this drive, they started with good field position, and they just need to take care of the ball and gain some yards. Williams to the bottom, Elstrom to the top. Alexis will lean forward for two or three, middle part of that Michigan line. Stopping him up once again. Every what? time you and I see Reggie Williams come in, I know we're both going. I know. Oh, fly pattern. Send him along. <laughs> down the I, I was watching the matchup down there, but you know the, as we mentioned earlier, Cody Pickett really not having the full spectrum of the playbook to work with. So it's, it seems this afternoon with the tough road type of plays he's been able to get off. And again, you've got to remember, it's a non-conference game. Rick doesn't want to show everything to the rest of the Pac-10 early on either. Yeah, just trying to jam it up in there. Michigan knows that, so they're stacking it tight. Not, not a bad number there for your first college game. The Huskies with 55 yards rushing for the game. Wilson hanging on to that one, and he leg drives forward. Good <laughs> enough for the first down. That was very close to a turnover, though, Sonny. <laughs> yeah. it. Uh, Matthias Wilson's eager to get the football, maybe a little over eager. I'd like to see the exchange here once again. Let's watch Cody Pickett's handoff right there. Looked like it was going to be an option. Matthias just took it away. Well, you saw Cody pointing there at the end of the play, and he said, yeah, it was me. <laughs> Whatever, it worked, and it's good for a first down at the 22-yard yeah. line. Cody, let go of the football, son. There you go. You know, after all the hard work today, it would be nice to see the offensive unit punch one in right I, now. I agree with you. They, they've been out there. They've, they've, they've been close. Had a couple big plays to get inside the red zone, but haven't punched it in. Wilson checks out now on first down. Alexis tries to bounce away from a couple guys. You're not going to get too far away from Victor Hobson too often. Now he's nearly 250-pound linebacker and uh, junior. Been very steady for the Wolverine defense. This is the first game of a home and home series between these two teams, so they'll battle in Ann Arbor. It's the first time they've scored off since the 1993 Rose Bowl. Washington looking to pick up its fifth win in the last seven meetings. Randy Hart talking with the defensive unit. They'd like to spend the rest of the game in about that position, or at least have seven more points on their side before they have to go back to work. Well, Randy being the mild-mannered coach that he is over there. Michigan taking that last time out. Wilson's back in in front of Alexis. And it's Wilson again. Big hole to the left side. Inside the 15-yard line. Cato June with the tackle. Gets him close to another first down. Different look on the gaps that time, Sonny. Yeah, let's look at it right here. You see Nick Newton, but actually it's a missed tackle from 37 for Michigan right there. Should have made a play, and, and Matthias Wilson, he, he's a big guy, he's kind of stocky, but he's got the quicks. And that time he was able to get by the defender. Yeah, you're right, bad angle of pursuit that time. Zach Kaufman, the defender for Michigan. Clock continuing to run down. The Huskies are gonna use a timeout. Cody Pickett standing next to Gordon Reese, watching the play clock count down to three. And now he'll burn the timeout. Washington will use the first of its three with a third and short situation now at the 15-yard line. 
Washington's offense back inside the red zone again. They'd love to get a touchdown to help put this one away. The flotilla out in force along Lake Washington. Third and two for the Huskies. They need to get it almost down to the 12-yard line. Wilson and Alexis in the backfield. It's Alexis to the left side, shot through, kept his balance, nearly got the first down. Boy, how did he survive the run of Carl Diggs coming up from the linebacker position? I don't know, but it seems like Carl Diggs has been just keying on Rich Alexis all afternoon, and that time he was able to get away from him, but he slowed down enough not to pick up the first down. Boy, all the way down and good balance, good strength right there. Oh, knocked the helmet off. Yep. Todd Howard. Fourth and inches here. Now a field goal would force Michigan to get two touchdowns. And Cody Pickett again standing by letting the play clock count down. It is fourth and, and literally a foot or so. You know, there's so many pluses and minuses either way to go with this decision. And Rick Neuheisel and the coaches will talk it over as they call another timeout, their second of the second half. This is an interesting one to ponder, Sonny. Well, you A know, field goal can put you up 11, but you always run the gamut, as we've seen, of other problems. Well, you see the hash marks down there. You've got the pro hash marks, the college hash marks. If they really were trying to set themselves up for the field goal, they may have ran a play towards the middle of the field rather than to the sideline. Although that left hash preferential for the, the right-footed kicker. If they don't get it, of course, then you give Michigan a chance to come back and tie it with a two-point conversion. A lot of different ways that they can play this one right now. If they're able to pick up a first at all, then they can literally just about run out the clock. Mariner baseball coming your way again tomorrow. They travel to Edison Field to take on the Anaheim Angels. M's continuing their chase for the major league record for most wins in the season. Mariners warm up at 6.30. The first pitch will follow right after that on your home of the Mariners, Fox Sports Net. Field goal time, Anderson on, pick it to holder, 31 yard attempt. And got it. Big field goal right there for John Anderson. And the Huskies, I might add, but coming off a missed kick, you got you gotta have a little bit of self-doubt in there, don't you, Todd? Yes, yeah, especially after he missed one <laughs> short range one earlier. The junior gets that one through. And Michigan with a lot of pressure to go late. Washington leading it by 11. It was all pretty quiet until going into the fourth quarter, they introduced the members of the 1991 championship team, the team that beat the Wolverines. Meanwhile, they're gonna run it back out after the kick, and there's all sorts of trouble now. A bad decision there by Todd Howard trying to force something, and he pays for it. Not a bad tackle by that freshman, Joseph Lobodon. We heard he was gonna get some playing time this week, Todd, but right here, he does a great job of watching that Howard guy and his belt buckle and not letting him get outside. You talk about settling down, that's a coaching clinic right there if the coaches want to use it. Good job. Quick toss to the outside to Marquise Walker on first down. That 91 national championship team, of course, beat Michigan in the 92 Rose Bowl. The last win for a Husky team over Michigan, wrapping up the perfect season. Hurry up offense now by the Wolverines. Navarre, the out route, open man there. They gave a lot of cushion again, and he'll drive until he gets to the sidelines and out of bounds. And a late flag tossed as well. Ronald Bellamy on the catch. Big mistake there. Yep, you see Rick Neuheisel reminding his players. This one's not in the bag, but the last thing you want to do 
foul on the defense, 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic first down. No, you want the Just Wolverines to, to earn their yeah. yardage, and you know, Rock Alexander out of bounds, clearly by at least five to 10 yards. I can't believe that the Huskies have somebody closer to Bellamy on coverage that time, Todd. He gave it up, and yeah, just no need for that shot. No, that was... Lamar studying his receivers again. Way locked on again from the snap for Walker. He gets dropped by Sam Cunningham playing at a cornerback position. First time we've called him the ball game today. A freshman from Westchester High in Los Angeles. Several players on both these teams West from that high school. Yeah, what a high school program they've got down there. Another quick out route and out of bounds again. Walker is short of the first down. Massey taking him out of bounds there. They'll let them pick them apart with three to four yard passes. You just don't want to give up the big ones. Well, they've got some youth back there on the defensive side, but they have speed. Both Cunningham and Chris Massey, the young man, and Rock Alexander. You see Omari Lowe playing on the inside now. Came on a blitz on the previous play. Nice day for Marquise Walker. Whoa! Yeah. Washington, I think, playing with six defensive backs now in the ball game. Navar again dropping, looking for Walker, just right between the seams, and he takes it down to the 30 yard line. He does a great job, Sonny, of making a stop right in the proper spot, right in the seam in a zone. Yeah, he's got the quicks to do it, and being a big guy, he can just stop and go. A lot of guys can't do that. Once you're, They can't get that motor started again, but he can. The senior from Syracuse, New York. I have a hunch we're going to be seeing more of him in the future on Sundays. He has turned in a great game today. Lots of time again for Navarre. Out of bounds quickly that time. Calvin Bell, who's been fairly quiet today, but a youngster with plenty of talent. Well, you're moving the ball. They're throwing the ball a nice 10 yard out. There is a flag down. Yeah, usually offside Huskies there. But the 15 yard penalty certainly didn't help the cause here. Gordon Reese asking John Navarre what he wants to do. Probably take it, first and five. Offside, defense, five yards from previous spot. Still first down. Need to put a little pressure on John yeah. Navarre just to shake him well, up. And you, want to try to, the time. you want to try to keep a receiver inside the field of play here and run a little clock, too. Both teams with one timeout remaining. You see Askew lined up now behind Navarre. The Huskies come up tight on the receivers this time. Slant route for Walker. Contact in behind him incomplete. Tough reach for the catch. The Huskies had him bracketed a little bit with Carruthers and Massey. Well, good thing for Massey that the ball was thrown behind him. If it had been thrown in front of him, either a score, it would have been interference. Let's look at the tight coverage here. Chris Massey in position. Looked pretty good there. Just a bad throw from Navarre. Yeah, they had a little bump down the field between the two of them. Consensual contact. Second and five. Pressure, Navarre gets rid of it in a hurry as the Huskies blew Carruthers down the middle that time. And then Navarre had to unload. Well, that's a good job that time. Great Carruthers getting some pressure on Navarre. And like most quarterbacks, that uh, at least today, when they've had pressure on him, Wandami Davis also coming. He's going to throw that ball high and wide. Michigan needs to get to the 20 to pick up another first down. They, of course, are thinking more. With time again, out route. Lowe wrapping up Walker. Now make it uh, Carr about a yard short. That's the difference. If that's Walker, he knows to get beyond the sticks. Carr made a mistake right there. Timeout called. And Michigan will use its final timeout now. They need to pick up a first down. This thing is not locked away yet at all. Michigan trying to get back on the board. They have a fourth down facing them. 
fourth down for the Wolverines. Navarre trying to drive across on the sneak will get it. That'll stop the clock as they move the chains. The Wolverines lined up, you know, they called at least a couple plays during that last time out. Well, I would look for number four if I was uh, Navarre. He's lined up in the slot to the left side. Runs a post route, there he is, Walker, incomplete. Low with a great reach just to get in the way that time. A Little bit more air under that one and it's six, but Omari stayed with him about as well as anybody could. This guy is a talent. Well, I thought Navarre should have drilled the ball a little bit more on this route. There's a little lob down there. He was actually open a lot sooner, and, and Omari Lowe closed the gap and, and able to make a play because the ball wasn't rifled in there. Yeah, tried to make a touch pass. You're right. There's a look at Cunningham, one of the DBs. Everybody here, our spotter, Courtney Frady, knows all he has to do is look for number four and point to him. Navarre's looking for him as well. Little combo route, and Walker has the catch for the touchdown. Lowe was in better position that time and lost the ball. They're playing him inside out. He goes to the corner. That was an excellent throw by John Navarre, and it's hard to believe that Omari Lowe could not make a play on that. How about these numbers for the day for Walker? 15 catches for 159 yards. Good ball right there, and it, one thing that Navarre did, he did look out to the flat and then throw to the corner. Good job of setting up the throw. Marquise Walker has set a new Michigan school record for receptions in a game with 15 today. Yeah, Michigan elects to go for two yeah, at this point. Yeah, they have to, obviously, yes. to get them within a field goal, and that's why I said it wasn't over. They get the onside kick. They're in good shape. They've got the bunch package to the right side once again. Navarre waiting, finds an open man, batted and incomplete. Omari Lowe got just <laughs> enough on it with what could conceivably be a game saver. That was an excellent job. That time, Navarre had time to throw, but Omari Lowe just got scored upon. He's gone the same receiver. Marquise Walker, that time able to get a fingertip on it, knock it away. Nothing too exciting about this play, huh, Todd? Well, I guess we can't get on Omari Lowe too bad. He gave up six, but he's responsible for 14. <laughs> so, you know, it's a plus day for him still. Just enough there on Walker. Sigh of relief, I'm sure Omari Lowe after that falls to the ground. Two touchdown catches for Marquise Walker today. As we said, a Michigan record 15 receptions. Not for yardage, it's not a school record, but 15 catches. And now the hands team. Nothing like a little game action drill here in your first game of the season. And don't forget the madness continues next week. We just go from number 10 to number one and on the road. Now let's see the uh, Epstein. Hit the big bouncer here. Yep. Wonder if they have Marquise Walker on this. Yes, they do, down at the end. If they don't, they're crazy. Through Stevens, but it's grabbed by Arnold right at midfield. Whoa, looked like David Bell on that play. <laughs> yeah, but do you mean Arnold or Stevens? <laughs> <laughs> well, either one. <laughs> Jeremy not quite able to get to that one, but Paul Arnold on top of the ball. And that will clinch the game because the Wolverines have no timeouts left. So they take an E twice and that'll wrap it up. For the second time in a row, the Huskies will defeat a top 10 team. And what else is interesting is that it's the seventh time in the last eight games that a guy getting his first career start as a quarterback comes up as a winner. Now, Cody Pickett didn't exactly do it statistically from the offensive side today, but it looks good in the books right now. That certainly does, and uh, the Husky fans knowing at halftime with the team behind, you never say it's over. 
you just never know about the Husky team of late. Rick Neuheisel told his team during the week, if you guys hang on to the ball, we'll win the game. So how many turnovers did they have today? I don't see any. I think that's right. It's a category you've got to win in big games like this. Final snap of the game. And they'll hang on to the ball. A big win for Washington. They come from behind with special teams and defense. Just your typical Husky fourth quarter comeback rally and post the win over the Michigan Wolverines to open the 2001 campaign. We'll be back with more from Husky Stadium. Though our final score today, Washington with the victory over Michigan, 23 to 18.